Hello and welcome to a Tuesday Talkie on the Barefoot Miniatures channel. I'm joined today by... Callum. Callum, yes, he got the cue. Watching Phil, that's how you get a cue. Uh, <laughs> and today we're going to be going over the Warriors of Chaos army list for the Old World. Uh, it's something that I'm really passionate about. It's my main army for both Sixth and the Old World, so quite a while now. Uh, and Callum, I've asked to be on because he is passionate, to say the least about the Warriors hmm. of Chaos Army. Um, One would say fanatical. Fan <laughs> fanatical. <laughs> well, well, we'll see when we get into it, won't we? However, one thing I will say is we... The, the game's been out for just less than two months, so if you're watching this in two years, take that in mind. If there is anything <laughs> that we miss as we're going along, drop it in the comments so that we can get better, as well as helping everyone else out that's watching this video with something that we might have missed. Um, and it might be a long one because we're going to go over all the lists and then some example lists because I've got my Kurgan army and Callum, you've got your unique way of looking at your own army. Yeah, so we're going to be going over those. Uh, so grab yourself a drink. And if you want this in podcast format, it's available to the Patreons a week early in a podcast feed. And with that, let's get into the, the guide proper. So, Callum, do you want to give us a rundown of what you think are the main, the general things to know about Warriors of Chaos? I would say they sort of excel at elite troops, but they also have a horde element in a weird way as well. You can sign, you kind of build them how you want in a weird way. They're quite, they're quite sandboxy. Um, Obviously, there is the element of not having much range stuff, but um, you sort of have a variation between Norska Horde or Elite Warriors, but you can obviously mix that up in itself. But then again, there's also giant monsters which you can build an army around, which is really, really cool. Yeah. You have a you know have your like your core choice choice of Forsaken, all sorts of stuff like that. Yeah, so it's as Callum mentioned, it's entire. You're going to be going entirely or near entirely for melee troops. I think the only actual like shooting weapon is Marauder javelins and throwing axes, as well as the hell cannon as an artillery piece. Yeah. Other than that, you're going to be limited to magic for like ranged defensive stuff, which I I've found to be quite successful. They've got quite good magic, especially Zinch. Um, but you're going to, in your mainstays, like even the, the Marauder Chaff unit, because as Callum said, it's in a bit of a weird way, your, your low quality troops are actually mm. quite high quality because you've got weapon skill four for your lowest quality troop, even your, your Warhounds, which are like five points a model, weapon skill four. So you are going to be highly weapon skilled even when you're low armor and then at the upper ranges where you get to chosen chaos knights and chosen chaos warriors the more elite stuff callum mentioned you're going to be absolutely nails with the the best armor that you can get as well as a ward save to top that off um and it's basically i'd say the army's built around champions like you you chaos lord or demon prince We'll see which one Colin favours in a second. I've not spoken yeah. to him about this. Um, but you Lord or Demon Prince and some absolutely nails characters that shore up your units that might already be good, but even if they're not, the Lord just carries them through, I've found. Yeah. yeah. Just, to, just to go back onto uh, the Marauder side thing, even though they are kind of your, like your chap unit, they're pretty good in combat as well. Like, you know, you can give them really cool, unique weapons. There's like, you know, great weapons and flails, which, where the way combat works in this edition, of course, it's quite nasty. Yeah, so flails, and I'm sure we'll get onto it properly when we get to Marauders. Yeah. But flails aren't in many places, but Marauders is one of those places. And being the plus, it's basically a great weapon without the strikes last element, right? Yeah. Which is incredibly good. Incredibly, incredibly good. good and it retains even in an ongoing combat retains the the minus two ap 
So you're going to be strength five in the in the first round. And that being the chaff unit that you get mm. with weapon skill four and potentially strength five at minus two AP. Oh, give me more. Give me more. Oh. And with how combat is what works with like give ground and things like that, quite often you're going back into that first round of combat again anyway. Yeah, so yeah, it, when someone for B goes, for by goes. Yeah, Literally. yeah, exactly. So, you know, you're quite often getting that plus two strength anyway. Um, so it's plus two strength, isn't it? Yeah, 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 plus two well, strength. I had a moment there. Yeah, yeah, we're quite often getting that plus two strength. So, what, weapon skill four, strength five, minus two armor? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, vegetarian. No. Right. Well, without further ado, let's get onto the the Warriors of Chaos special rules. And yeah, I think the first two, are, although they're going to be big on the actual effects, we can sort of cover them within the units uh, because they appear on specific units. So this is Chaos Armor yeah. X plus. This is a award save that you're going to get uh, that also. It means that if your wizard has armor as a special rule, they can cast in that armor. So sorcerers of chaos have chaos armor, so will be heavy armor or whatever type of armor, and a five up ward, and get to cast in that armor, which is incredibly good. And it's also on your chosen chaos warriors and chaos knights. And just to have a ward save across blocks of infantry or just as standard on knights really powerful the fact that it's sort of i know points are probably included in this but it's sort of inbuilt into your character as well mm. so it's sort of it's sort of a like yeah you can relax a little bit when you're thinking about what how you're tooling up your heroes and things like that because you know right i've got that element covered already built into the character now i can focus on other parts of the army which is really i find that really like for me <laughs> it's like a massive like tax of the brain <laughs> yeah no I, I agree like it's it's something that and i'm sure like we'll get onto it more right when we go on to the chaos lord because this will be very yeah. specific with the the builds but it's something that means that any character well i can make it so survivable just by taking one magic item to get regen or something like that because i've and then i've got a saving triplicate because even say a sorcerer can have an armor save from the chaos armor ward save from the chaos armor and then a regen yeah. and it just makes them so survivable the next one is in sorcerer weapons which means that any of your hand weapons minus one ap is what i meant and magical attacks so demons eat your heart out which is which is really good as a special rule it means anyone that is has these insulted weapons which is a lot of units when it starts at, like mm. building up into an army can hurt ethereal so spirit hosts like vampires oh sorry necromancers with the ethereal like cloak or whatever it is spring to mind as well as the, yeah. the, the hilarious part to this hilarious part to this as well they're really good at fighting demons because mm. <laughs> Because demons have a uh, ward saving, but you don't get it against magical attacks, right? Yeah. So <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> we built you, we can kill you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's, I quite like it. I quite like it in that just exterminating yeah. hordes of demons because that's how they all, that's how they all like level up to level 40 and yeah. then like go out into the world just by fighting hordes of demons in the waste. Now, the first special rule that I think this will be a bit of a talking point, Gaze of the Gods. Now, Gaze of the Gods is a risky one, I would say. Mm. So I would agree. it's a one to six table of that you can roll on for your characters at the start in the command phase of a turn. On a one, you gain stupidity. And if you roll it multiple times, you get minus one each time. Two and three are one turn benefits, like for that the remainder of that turn. And then four to six, a full turn benefit. Sorry, a full game benefits. So 50% of the time, you're getting a full game boost for your character. And that can range from an additional attack on a five, apotheosis, plus one, weapon, plus one strength, plus one leadership, or a murderous mutation for plus one weapon skills. So things that directly benefit 
exactly what you want to be doing 50% of the time. However, yeah. go on. Yeah. Go on. Just looking at it, it is like, it does seem like there is a huge, because we all want to always have that fear of rolling one, right? Um, mm. It does seem like high risk, but looking at it, it is like the Chaos Gods. It's quite tempting. It's like you've got, you like, <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's it. It's a really fitting rule, right? Because even yeah, when you yeah, get yeah. stupid, it's not going to happen all the time, right? Yeah, but exactly. I, in my own usage of it, I've got stupid enough <laughs> times that, yeah. and then failed that stupidity test. I would only recommend rolling on this if you've got the favor of the gods magic item, which is five yes. points, and we'll get to it. Or even just, let's mention it now. You, there's the favour of the God's Magic item that allows you to re-roll this test once again. Now, I would roll on it every turn if you've got favour of the gods. And if you've not... And I would say everyone needs to take favour of the gods. It's five points. If you've not, I don't roll on this table unless it's like a round of combat where, oh, I'm up against like a mega hard dwarf lord. I'm going to die if I don't get a bit of a boost. That's exactly what I was going to say. I wouldn't do it. If you haven't got favourite gods, I wouldn't do it first turn. Or I'll probably do it later on in the game when I'm going to need those buffs to make myself stronger and sturdier. So you have to take whatever the damage and fight back. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree completely with what you're saying. Because at the late point of the late game, stupidity while you're in combat, eh, it's not, not the biggest deal. But um, you're going to need... You're going to need the favour of the gods if you want to do it early on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, exactly. It's just, there's the, you can do this a lot of times, and I have done in games and just never got a one. But because, like, fantasy in the old world, in gen, like, in specific, is such a movement-based game, there will be that game where mm. it's like, oh, I got a one. Oh, I failed my leadership. Oh, I'm standing still and now going to get flank charged <laughs> by the entire army. Like, it can be really unforgiving, yeah. I find. Yeah, and that's when you're like deep sigh. <sighs> <laughs> Shall we re rack? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but it's there's a nuance to it, right? That's what I'd say. You, 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 you have to be picky when you use it. Not so much when you have favor of the gods, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, next we've got. As an army special rule, army wide, the marks of chaos. Mm. And these come in five forms. And that is the mark of chaos undivided. So you can re roll all failed fear, panic, and terror. So not break tests, like specifically. So you can't do it from combat, but you can if you get like shot 50% of your Marauder Horse unit. Or twenty five percent of your Marauder Horse unit, they don't care. They just reroll. So yeah. it sort of devalues a a battle standard a little bit. Don't think it's as needed as in another army, but I'd still mm. be taking it because it's twenty five points for plus one combat res. <laughs> yeah. It's my it's my thing, but it's it's really good. It's one that I've I was playing Zinch, um, and just found I wanted to backtrack a little or just change up a little bit. And Mark of Chaos and Divided was the one that I settled on just because it's solid, it's it's got no downsides, and like it makes your units dependable, which was really good for my fast cav army. Because I when I needed to get out of sticky situations or have that unit around, it helped. It's also free. Also free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that is in the in the plus points. In the, definitely on that side. Anything to add there other than the freeness? Um, I think it, obviously army dependent on who you're fighting against, but that would be pretty clutch against like undead. Uh, yeah. Tomb King. Is Tomb King. Tomb King's a Tomb King's course, copied, there, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so anything like that, that's going to be really, really good. Um, and demons, yeah. So all yeah. that. Combined within that, for free, but yeah, brilliant. And then there is 
nuances to just being undivided anyway. You, know, you get a unique spell as well, which we'll get to. Yeah, but, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that when we get to Sorceress. Yeah. Um, Mark of Corn, you gain Frenzy. And Frenzy is quite good, but also quite bad. Mm. <laughs> I would say. Yeah. I, I've i never, through my years of playing Warriors, I've, I've never really taken it. Actually, that's a lie. I did take it on one big block of like Chaos Warriors with double-handed weapons, uh, additional hand weapons years ago. But it's, you have to, what's, you have to be very careful how you use it. Yeah. Because you can be, you can be sort of honey trapped into, like, come on, get this unit. And you're like, oh, I've got to charge them now. You charge. Yeah. Now you my flank's baited open. really easily, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really badly baited. Um, one thing that I could say you could do to mitigate that, though, a little bit at least, is have a unit of dogs for every normal unit in your army and stick the unit of dogs in front of your unit and then you can't charge because you can't make a successful charge so you don't have to charge that's that's quite a solid idea actually mm -hmm. it was um, it was a, like a classic sixth ed it's like yeah. when i was like a kid i had a, a corn army and that was like how you played corn was because mm. you like auto you had to like force charge in that and it was really good in sixth because you you never had to declare a charge because it was guess it like it was guess range you never pre measured, so you'd you'd like just like right no charges to declare. Oh, I check on my charge ranges. I'm in those, so they do it. So it was good oh. in that way, and then you had to mitigate the in the same way as you do now. Had to mitigate your units just being uncontrollable, so you did that with cheap dogs. That makes a lot of sense. It's quite cool and sort of in theme as well. I like the idea of these bloodthirsty barbarians with a bunch of dogs of them. Yeah, yeah, like it didn't look, it didn't look super gamey as an army. It looked like a, a horde of, no. of psychos with their war dogs, and it's cool. Yeah, Mark of Nurgle. Basically, during the combat phase, reroll or opponents must reroll to hits of six against you. Solid, pretty solid with a high weapon skill. It means that they're reroll because your army's got a fairly high weapon skill across the army basic units and lords against your lord most of the time are re-rolling a third of their hits i think this is quite a good one yeah and i think it's i think it's and it i think it fits really well with certain units um not everything but certain units it just like you said a high weapon skill unit and just having that to mitigate the sixes to hit just that be that can be so annoying for your opponent. Yeah, well, it's like your chaos warriors have weapon skill five, so yeah, it's like enemy heroes that are hitting them on threes. Everyone else is fours, really. Like I mean, barring a couple of units. Yeah. So a, a third of your opponent's hits are getting re-rolled, which is just incredibly good. Oh, and I I realise I've not asked you. Well, I'll ask you at the end. I've got something to ask you at the end of these marks. So, yeah, cool. Mark of Slanesh, you get plus one initiative during the first round of any combat. In addition, if the majority of the models in the unit have Mark of Slanesh, you automatically pass Panic. This is my favourite. <laughs> this is your favourite? <laughs> yeah, this is my favourite. I think it's... I've built, I've built my army round, in a way, round this mark, because it's just so cool. It's really? such a cool mark. I really, I really rate it. I think it's really good. Yeah, so the plus one initiative definitely good. Like stacking with, like mm. flails being great weapons at initiative, could be really beneficial in that you can go up to initiative. Was it three base, one for this, yeah. plus three for the charge into the front, so seven. Like that's going to be faster than a lot of elves. Yeah, which is and there's some nice, nice combos with this mark you can do with great weapons, which is amazing. In what I, way? I rate them. Go on. Oh, we'll get to that when we get to the uh, <laughs> mutations. Oh, that was a little teaser, was it? That was a little teaser. <laughs> yeah, 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 a little teaser. Now, what I started out playing for the old world, and something that I go back to when like Beiji has earned Zinch's favour, 
is the mark of Zinch. And that's you gain flaming attacks, magic resistance minus one. And if a wizard has joined a unit with mark of Zinch with a unit strength of 10 or more, uh, so that's five cavalry or 10 dudes, you could apply plus one to your casting rolls. It, Which is huge. Yeah, he's really good for a, an army that will largely be relying on casting. Minus one magic resistance, I found it I found a bit meh. If I'm if I'm completely honest. Because yeah, I've not used it, so I'm actually interested that it, you said that because I I find lots of the spells that really like bend you over tend to be buffs to other yeah. people's units, not things that damage my unit. Obviously that does happen. Hmm. But if I've already got... It makes it really hard for enemy spells to come off. Like, if I've got a bunch of casters and they're in units and I've got minus one magic resistance, spells aren't likely to go off. However, it's already quite easy to dispel, especially mm. in a chaos army with the magic items that we'll get to in a minute. Flaming attacks as well, I found... Because I like there's a load of dwarves... Like, dwarves are a very popular army, right? Yeah. Now they've got ward saves against like uh, from runes. They have ward saves against flaming attacks really easily, <laughs> and it's like a five point upgrade. So it's one of them ones that get added to things just to make like the combination of runes different because you can't have the same combination of runes. Yeah, and it can be like this. I think yeah, this mark can be kind of a burden, right? right? Yeah. When you don't want it to be, it can be like ah, uh, I didn't. I don't want that to happen. <laughs> yeah, I don't actually you, want You pay points for something that's actually hindered you a bit in this game. Yeah. So, now, yeah, I thought that as well. Saying that, when I start playing more against more Tomb Kings, because people haven't yet had time <laughs> to get the armies that we... Like, so obviously you know, Callum, everyone else might not know. I was playing 6th edition up until, like, sort of the week before the Old World came out. Yeah. Now, Tomb Kings were still very rare because they were like they just models were unavailable. When people start getting those Tomb Kings armies and the the Vampire Counts armies, potentially, it's it might become that flaming is just much better. But at the moment, I'd be wary of suggesting it. Yeah, it's all it's all situational, isn't it? Like mm. the, all these. They're all like a toolkit. A lot of these things, in, I find with marks, like toolkits against particular armies. Yeah, well, other than Nurgle, I think. As you, like, yeah, as other you than said, Nurgle. It's, it's something that you're always going to have combats. So, mm. although it's not like, oh, just completely shut down magic phase like Zinch or flaming attacks working against some and being hindering against others, Nurgle is always going to be that good benefit. Yeah. Now, if you had an army, Callum, if, and as we said, Nurgle's quite good, but you've already started collecting Slanesh, would you go multi-god or would you go mono-god? I would go multi-god, because I like... I End like of cast. Multi uh, <laughs> see, I like multi, multi-god uh, armies, because it just dates back to the old lore of armies and how they work. They're war bands of weirdos that okay max is max is done so welcome to my uh youtube channel uh oh, no, but <laughs> lizard foot miniatures uh, <laughs> um no i yeah I, I love it i actually think but it's, i love i want to hear your opinion though as well obviously i am <laughs> i am a monogod sort of person however i think the army is based around having multi-god. Like, I, I think that looking at the army list and how it seems to all fit together, mm. it seems to be written in the mind to have multi-god lists rather than mono-god lists. Yeah. So I've not got a particular problem with that. It's just not... Like, I, I just like mono-god because I've just been playing sixth and you, if you're mono-god, you've got to be mono-god. Or if you, yeah. your general's like Zinch... You've got to be all Zinch. I get that. I get it. Yeah. So it's just what what I'm used to. I'm just I'm too old to change. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking back to like 
like really old like lore and stuff like that, and you get like a chaos. I, I can't remember what particular story it is. But it's like an army of all mixed gods. It's led by a Zinch demon prince, and that Zinch demon prince is like telling Slanesh marauders to do stuff. It's just like bizarre. But reading it, you sort of get the. It, it's what chaos is, right? It's chaos energy. It's not reformed. It's mm. not this one, uh, like, like mono religious faith. It's like this crazy thing with multi gods, like multi de- deities. So, you know, yeah. Well, it all obviously happens, doesn't it? Like, I think it's yeah. It's the Beast Slayer book in Gotrek and Felix has a chaos lord of Zinch with the two sorcerer of Zinch twins leading a, a multi faith army. So mm. that that's one example. That if if no one's read that book, read that book. It's a really good book. Surely you've read the Gotrek and Felix series. Yes. If not, turn this off. The audio books are unaudible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yet that that's the marks. It will tie into every unit in the army. But I don't think any of them, other than maybe Slanesh, as you were saying before, particularly change the units that I would like that I tend to check take mm. or the options it's maybe only that initiative bonus yeah that I'd look at and go oh yeah that'll change me from taking great weapons to something else or vice versa so let's go on to and this is a bit of a change from the normal format onto the magic items now that is because I normally do a bit of context for like oh what is the the hero let's compare them to something like i don't know a chaos lord now one thing that we don't have to do with a chaos lord is compare them to a chaos lord they're the hardest nut job around so (laughs) what what we'll do is we'll go through the items if you want a bit of the context in that style in the timestamps will be the chaos lord that you can go there to get that context um but let's get let's get on with the magic items so we've got the demon sword 75 points You've got plus D3 strength, minus 2 AP, D3 extra attacks, mag- which are magical, strike first, and you, like say on a Chaos Lord, have horrendously high initiative. Mm. And basically all your characters is, are only striking after elves, really. So the strike first, even if someone else has strike first, you will still be going first. However, if you roll a 1 when you roll into hit you hit against your own unit and that that always puts that puts me off entirely yeah this thing scares me because i like you want to it's so juicy and it looks so good but then that uh, i've (laughs) it's the curse of the dice right you you roll like yeah come on this is gonna be amazing and you roll and then there's four ones and you're like oh no (laughs) yeah it's it's one of them that i think if you put in your Chaos Lord in like a a super unit, like Chosen Chaos Knights, well, you've got five attacks and plus D3. Mm. So even if you get a one, your average going to get one, one on your six attacks. Yeah. Which means that you hit your own unit once, even on average with this. So then I, that's yeah, costing so- me like 50 points a turn just from killing my own blokes. You have to roll to wound and everything as well, don't you? It doesn't just auto wound. Oh yeah, but I'm like strength. That. I'm strength five plus D three. Yeah. So I'm wounding yeah, no, twos, know. and then it's um, minus two AP. So like a half of the time I'm losing that night. It's ju- it's yeah. just too much for me when for ten points less, I can get an ogre blade, that's under my own control. It's plus two strength, minus two AP, and it does multi wounds too. Yeah. It, comparatively to that i just don't want i don't particularly like it for my own chaos lord it's a lot of points as well isn't it when you think about it for the for for that downside like obviously it's it's a demon swords have always been like this that's like yeah. this staple of a demon sword is always the ones that you're on yet even in 40k that statistics but um when you, it's the it minus two ap points. yeah that's the bit that yeah i mean if it was you hit your own unit and you just like, yes, I'll kill one of my own, but I'll potentially kill one of my own. But also those other five attacks will absolutely wreck the other unit. Yeah. Yeah. But at AP minus two, well, even just 
a great weapon or a lance is AP minus mm. two. Yeah. Which I like a solid option in the chaos list. Like normally I'm like, oh yeah, maybe take a magic weapon or something like this. In the chaos list, a normal weapon for you is very good. <laughs> like you just I think you can take a flail as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's that's well that's what I've been running my champions with is either a flail or a lance, because they're all it's mounted. Good. And it's <laughs> Minus two AP all the time at initiative and just really good. If it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> yeah, so we don't fix it with the. I think we both go in there. And don't fix it with the demon sword, right? Yeah, like obviously, do it if your character's built in the law with that. Yeah, do it. Just have fun with it. Wreck face of it. Um, I think that's always I, the caveat, right? Is yeah, don't let yeah. us telling you something is is like, yeah 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 the, ca- the caveat is yeah like. Obviously, all do what you want, but yeah, I, I don't think I would personally run it. Yeah, as um, a, as like a, a, a hard gaming thing. I would yeah, run. yeah. It maybe if you're yeah. going into a unit of marauders, if you were joining a unit of marauders, yeah, I don't care if mm. I kill that like seven point dude, like he can just die. I'll have a demon sword, thanks. Yeah. Not if he's in a like it... a bang bus of chosen. Because even if he's mounted on a dragon or something like that, he still has to hit himself. That's the, that's the that's the other side to it as well. So it's not like oh I roll once oh I'm not in a unit. No, he still has to. <laughs> yeah, still has to stab himself with the weapon. <laughs> so next we've got the chaos rune sword for forty five points. This is plus one strength, minus one AP, magical attacks, and you've got plus one to your weapon skill and initiative. Um, the minus one AP is sort of by the by because you're in sword sword weapons always have that along with the magical attacks. Plus one strength will mean that most of your characters are weapon skill. Sorry, are strength six. And it, the plus one weapon skill will mean that your Chaos Lord is weapon skill eight. That's crazy. Which, well, it's it's a bit of a midway, I think. Mm. So, because it means that... It, it, it is crazy high, right? You'll be hitting Dwarf Lords on... Threes. Yeah, that's what I meant, sorry. It is, yeah. It's like a crazy high stat. Like, yeah. not much has that in the game. So... He, it's, it's, you've got that benefit of hitting those like one or two models in the enemy army on threes, but it means that weapon skill fours you're still getting hit on fours because you're not double yeah. plus one. So it it doesn't quite give you that help. I don't think it's for me worth forty five points, and I think that's again in the context of I really really like just normal flails or lances on my chaos lords like it, they, yeah, they're just I, so good with those yeah it's again like you said yeah, it's the 45 points bit that gets me if it was a little bit cheaper i'd definitely consider it but for for that price tag that's like yeah almost half your pro- points on on your big hero mm. um i just can't really justify it if i was going to play him for a really high level yeah um, and it, if you're watching this or listening to this and thinking, oh, they're just going to shit on all the magic items. There's at least a few magic items in here, like later on. It's just oh, chaos has such good weapons in general and such good stats. The magic weapons isn't the bit that I think is the key. And I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's a few things in here that we're not going to agree on in terms of magic items as well, which well, is great. Hopefully, so, hopefully, yeah, yeah. Like so, the filth makes plus one strength, minus one AP, magical attacks, and if you cause one or more unsafe wounds. The enemy must take a toughness test. If failed, you suffer minus one to its toughness for the rest of the turn. If it was the rest of the game, great. I don't like it because it's the rest of the turn and I've already attacked if I've done it. Yeah, this is the bit I thought was a bit like, well, that's a bit of an oversight. It should, I think it should have been for the rest of the game. Um, I think because it, it's just not going to see much use because if I've hit you, then... Yeah, I can't, I can't work that one out, really, unless you're fighting a big monster and it somehow like rolls a six. But. Yeah. I, I suppose if I'm in a challenge and I'm on a mount, yeah, my mount's going to be less initiative than me, so we'll then yeah. get to do some and have an easier time at wounding. But if I'm in, like, most E-Chaos champions, like... Fluff reasons wise, I want to be challenging quite a lot because I need mm. to I need to prove to the gods that I'm the hardest guy around. And yeah. 
even if you strike into the unit, it's like if I do a wound, usually I kill the bloke. If I'm in a challenge, well, no one else can strike in anyway to help out with that minus one toughness. Yeah. Yeah, it's worth. Uh, <laughs> spell me yeah. the sword. Yeah, um, well, it's. 20 I points. think this one. I think this one is another. See, when I read this today, I yeah. thought, wow. Oh, I thought I could, I could. Obviously, it's not the sword doing the damage, so this is the caveat that I'm coming with. It's any wizard that suffers one or unsaved wound from the spell from sword, but if it was just like an unsaved wound from the user, I'd be like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Because then you could be like, you could put it on a chaos wizard who has like, you know, fireball or something like that. And he has this blade that I, I don't know, whatever fluff you want to put on it, shoots it through his sword. Uh, you use, lose magic levels by hitting you with other stuff, but because you have to be wounded by the weapon itself, you're probably going to kill the wizard but, anyway. This is what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, he's for 20 points, with that yeah. as the only benefit, like, because my AP minus one I get from ensorcelled weapons anyway. Yeah, any wizard that I'm going to attack in combat, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to kill. And if I don't kill that wizard, like that's already a bad day, and that is a... <laughs> I, I, we might as well give up being a chaos warrior if we're not killing wizards. Yeah, before. they crumble like Rivita wizards. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it's if that if that wizard is in combat with you, they can't cast spells anyway because they're in combat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moving on for that one, sadly. Right. So magic armor, armor of the damned, seventy points. It counts as full plate. In addition, during the combat phase, enemy models must re-roll successful to hit rolls against the wearer. It's expensive. This was absolutely cracking in sixth at 35 points. Mm. I still think it's good because most things will hit you on fours. So they'll hit you with half of their attacks and then you force them to re-roll that. So they're going down. Their hits is going down by 50%. Which is put that good. Just I'm um, just idea throwing balls out. Put that on the guy. Does he be no? So yeah, put that on the guy on a dragon. Mm. That's pretty right. But again, it's the it's the seventy points, right? Um, but as, as I like we said it. before, like he's we mm. we just shit on all of the weapons. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we've got <laughs> like we we have we just shit on all the weapons, and Bond them you've on. already got a ward save, so. Just yeah. increasing survivability. Oh, yes. Yes, please. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, survivability, oh, I think I think that's the key there, right? With warriors, it's the survivability because you, you're strong. Yeah. So you want to survive long. And I think that's, yeah, run, <laughs> there'll be the running theme. Be strong, survive long. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I like it. It's, it is good. <laughs> Crimson Argon, Armor of Dargon, 40 points. Uh, Infantry or cavalry only. It's a suit of heavy armor. You're immune to the multiple wounds special rule. You suffer a single wound instead. Now, I think it's quite good. We'll have to see how much multiple wound stuff actually gets into the game. Like I know obviously dwarves have magic items that do multiple wounds, but the main things that spring to my head tend to be like cannons, bolt throwers, gain hold by a a stone thrower template. Hmm. And for an infantry or cavalry character, I'm going to be near a unit anyway and not singled out. It's going to be yeah. a rare occasion. So other than that, it's then magic items, which at the moment I'm not willing to pay 40 points for that. I wish it was full plate, then it'd be quite tasty. Yeah. I wish it was full plate. If it was full plate, I'd be all on that. With Chaos Knights, I'd be all on that. Because you could have a big unit chosen... The Chaos Lord and full plate armor with this really cool rule means he's not going to be sniped off by cannons. Rather than downgrading but, his armor. Yeah, yeah, because now he's downgrading. He's stepping down wearing this, and I'm like, uh... yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he's he's. I suppose you just have to tailor it to how your general yeah. meta is playing with the multiple wounds rule. In are they taking loads of it? Are they taking? The frontier acts in every single game that you're playing, you're getting decapitated or the ogre player. Mm. Or are you just facing cannons and you should be nearer a unit? There might be someone in the comments section that tells me to go eat dirt because <laughs> they've <laughs> been using it the whole time. And I'm proving me wrong 100%. I've, you know, 
Uh, but with it's, I just, it's, it's just an opinion. It's just an opinion. Yeah, it's just yeah, just an opinion. But I actually want people to write in the comments if they're using that because that's cool if they are. Um, mm. But yeah, um, yeah, I just wish it was play. It. That's yes. my note on that. So next, I think he's potentially one of the best magic items in the section. Other than the five point magic item, we'll get up to the crown of everlasting conquest for forty points. You can get a five up regen, and even if you if you don't want to be bothered with the gaze of the gods table, you could just take this on your chaos lord, and that is yeah. enough to just be like, right, well I've got a full plate five up ward, five up regen. <laughs> like, it just makes you incredibly survivable. I just forty points. Think it's I. Yeah, exactly that. Very survivable, and I think it pairs well with some other items from the common magic armor. So I really think it's good with... What's the item? There it is. Armor of Meteoric Iron. Mm -hmm. um, now, I like that because it's a heavy piece of armor, uh, but it can never be reduced or improved, but it's a flat 5-up. So it's like a 5-up ward with a 5-up ward with a 5-up region. Yeah, no, so no. In, my, in my head, that's... If you go, if you're fishing, that's a good thing to fish fish for with in combination because it's only a twenty piece piece of armor. So if yeah. you've got a standard bearer with that crown of everlasting, uh, what's it called again? Crown of everlasting conquest. Like yeah, in combination with that, it, it makes your standard bearer really, really tough. Yeah, well, especially if you like, we're recommending taking stuff like flails, or if you want to take yeah. a great weapon, which are two handed, so you can't get a shield anyway. You're losing out on one point of armor with that combination. Callum said uh, the meteoric iron, and therefore it's not it's not out of the realms of possibility that you're just going to lose that anyway. That minus one mm. from like Gromwell weapons or something. So, yeah, five up, five up, five up with the everlasting crown of conquest. Good, good. And the the five armor's always there because you can't reduce it any further. Yeah, so it's just it just seems really tasty. Well, I think it's that's, that's a com lord, even but yeah, like, yeah. As in, like to Me have too. the meteoric iron. Um, yeah, brazen collar for twenty points, magic resistance two. If you're getting destroyed by spells, maybe, but I think it's too specific on yeah. one dude. When I, when later in the section, there's something that you just shut down spells with. I suppose it's good for Khan if you do, if you want to do mono god. And don't want to take any spell casters. Have the, have this in your army somewhere. If yeah, not it's, um, it's got an asterisk. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. Exactly. So you could just have it on unit champions that can take twenty five point pieces of magic items to just make sure yeah. that you have magic resistance everywhere. I rate that on a corn army. That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be really really cool. Shall we go on to? In, let's go on to enchanted. And then we'll oh, go yeah. on to magic banners so that it's in a bit okay. of a like a. So, do you want to do Enchanted Arcane and Banners last, or do you want to leave Arcane <laughs> let's last? Let's do, let's do Enchanted, then Banners, and then we'll come back to Arcane. Pendant of Damnation, 30 points. You get Infantry or Cav. Oh, you don't get it. It's Infantry or Cavalry only. You gain plus one modifier to the attacks characteristic of your model for every wound that you lose. So, if you're on, like, or if you're Chaos Lord with four wounds, if you lose three of them, you'll be on eight attacks. Yeah. Which, <laughs> I look at this quite a lot and go, oh, I really like that. And do you know what? I'd recommend it, but I never take, I never seem to end up on taking it myself. Because I'm yeah. just like, well, I don't so want to take any wounds. I want to just smash people without taking wounds. I've just thought of something, right, I, now, I might be completely wrong here, but just as every wound you lose, but if you use a healing potion to regain health, you still lost those wounds. Well, rules as written. <laughs> um, so you could technically regain your health and still have those plus one, plus one attack. I'm not sure. It might not be that way in clients. But no, um, if anyone knows the answer to that... It, do you know if there's like some sort of obscure rule yeah. buried away somewhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That count that like counters that. Please le do leave it in the comments because because so I, I, I love like... I I love digging up a rabbit hole like that. It just 
<laughs> it's just like a really cool combo but in my head. And by like, like face level logic, yeah, it follows. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Post, potion of what is it? Vitality. Yeah, to potion of vitality. Yeah, yeah. I just love the idea of you. Oh no! And you've got these appendages crawling out of you, <laughs> and then you just swing a potion. And you're like, they're still here. <laughs> So, Helm of Many Eyes, 20 points. The wearer gains strike first. However, due to the the confusing visions that you see, you gain stupidity. Something that I used to take all the time. However, I never do because I, I'm terrified of stupidity now. Mm. Honestly, terrified you've, of you've stupidity. Le- you've learned first hand from it, haven't you? So. I, the amount of times I've failed a stupidity test yeah with a chaos lord who's leadership nine is crazy like oh my chaos lord's in this perfect position to charge or oh i really need to get out of the way or i'm gonna get like absolutely done over by a ranked up dwarf iron breakers unit with a standard bearer of plus five combat rares Mm. and then failed the stupidity (laughs) it i think i'm okay to go after elves anyway and I probably got enough wounds to just survive anyway. Is what I, I think, think that's again, yeah. I think you just make yourself really tanky. You don't, you don't really worry about hitting first. I think if you charge and hit a chaos lord as well, he's you know if he's mounted, he's, uh, especially he might hit things first anyway, even if they are an elf in most some cases. So yeah, anything that doesn't um, have strikes first, if you charge, yeah, you'd be going first with a chaos lord at least. Now. Favour of the Gods, five points. The best magic item in the entire magic items list. I would yeah, say. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> like, the, the gaze of the gods is what makes you get tough and stronger. Mm. This thing mitigates the one roll of a one. Yeah. So, for five points. And it's an enchanted, enchanted items, that slot. You know, it varies between because some people like taking certain things and that enchanted items a lot. Um, but you can have multiples of this item as well, favor of the gods, which is go across your army. Yeah, um, I think yeah, five it points should be taken think... on every character that you have. Yeah, because then I agree. Fifty percent of the turns in the game, you'll be getting better for the rest of the game. Yeah, two out of six results, you'll be getting better for that turn. And on mm. a one, you just re-roll it, <laughs> and then, and for five points to boost to like be at least more safe in boosting your character every turn. Yeah, oh, just it's like, just so good. There's such good benefits to gaze. So, hundred <laughs> percent, take that in. Yeah, I thought we were going to disagree on any of these, Callum. <laughs> uh, maybe banners we might. Right, right, right. Banner of the Gods, 75 points, ignores all negative modifiers to leadership characteristics. I don't like it. I don't like it. Because it doesn't... So I... And this is a an, a redaction from when the Brett video that I did on the Arcane Journal in the negative modifiers, I thought they that included break test modifiers. It doesn't. It's only stuff like minus one leadership from banshees mm. or something or whatever it is reducing your leadership being nearby for 75 points i think it's quite steep to just ignore that and i know yeah, you can get a spell I've... of minus two leadership but do you know what helps me defeat the minus two leadership spell which like people like they'll they'll do that spell and then try and get in combat do you know what really helps with that just winning that combat by being harder than the enemy unit exactly don't <laughs> die <laughs> yeah, don't quit dying. How about, you how about I? How about I don't die? How about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just, I'll, I'll just spend seventy-five points on being extra hard comparatively. Exactly. No, so, I agree with you. I am going to agree with you on that one. Boring, but yeah, I am. Um, I looked at it, and as soon as I opened up the book and looked, I went, "Meh." Is... Yeah. Now, if it was like it gave you effectively, like old stubborn or like 30k stubborn where you do, you don't ever modify your leadership including for break tests so you're always just giving ground if you pass mm. 
I'd take it. I'd take it. But when it's when it's just like actual leadership modifiers, I I prefer to spend on something else. The Doom Totem, sixty five points. Any all enemy units that can draw line of sight to the model carrying the Doom Totem suffer minus one to their leadership. You give me your... I initially thought this... Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Then I realised if you're in combat, I can't draw a line of sight to something out of the combat. Yeah. So, and I don't do any damage really at range as Chaos. So just, having a dude on just... a hill with this banner doesn't really help much. It's a lot of, again, a lot of points for how effective is that going to be across the whole game? Not much, I don't it, think. I suppose it, it helps you it helps you make things just break and flee by being unlucky easier. I, I tell you what, actually, I think that would be quite good with a Hell Cannon army. Because when they hit the units, they take a test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if just they've got line of sight to that, it's like a stack. Have, a, thing, have right? a BSB yeah. stood on the hill nearby, just carrying this banner. Everyone can see it. Hell cannons yeah. all around. Yeah, I know. I know it's not uh, a universal thing to play and do, but that's the one thing I can see it being really. Surely, quite if I cool. want to do like a hell cannon army, though, I'm gonna be, like centered. I'm gonna be doing chaos dwarves, aren't I? Yeah. If if that's you, if you want to do that, I'd recommend the the Just better army list dwarves. for you. Yeah, might be chaos dwarves with some normal chaos allied allied in. The blasted yeah. standard, shall we go on to? 40 points. I like this item. So it's a unit carrying the blasted standard, standard may re-roll any rolls of one when making an armor save roll against wounds suffered in the shooting phase. I like this. Yeah, it's it's fairly good now, especially now that cannons are only minus two AP, not just ignores armor. Yep. <laughs> Meaning that my Chaos Knights on horse will be getting a a four up save against the cannon and then re rolling the ones. If that so saves one Chaos Knight, it's been worth it. Yeah. It's also like uh, ranged armies that pepper you, they just pepper you like non stop. Mm. This is going to pay dividends. I think it's just, it'd be so good against certain armies. Um, and it will just cover those elite units that you were like, oh, I wish I didn't roll that bloody one against my <laughs> armor. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I was more thinking the cannon is like even in an extreme case of shooting. Yeah, yeah. In, in, even in extreme cases, it's still doing doing the rounds. But I'm took like um, universally, how many armies have cannons? Yes. Yeah. Well, I suppose, yeah. Like I yeah. suppose you mean like say like quarrelers or yeah, quarrelers. I'm talking about archers. archers. Yeah, you, yeah. You roll the one. Oh, I'll just re-roll that. I've saved a single knight. The standards paid for itself. Cheers. It's yeah. quite often the case, if people have a big unit of archers, they will shoot t tough armoured, but even though they're toughness four, but relative when you're throwing a bow at that, still what, fives to wound? Mm. So you get they might try and fish for that failed one or one up that you roll, and you're like, shit, and you've lost a Chaos Warrior, uh, sorry, a Chosen Knight to a unit of archers that are probably almost the same cross as that one chosen yeah. chosen knight. And it hurts so, when you lose that chosen hurts. knight. Yeah. So that I think Blast of Standard is pretty cool. I no, like I, it. I agree. I don't I, think it's I don't think it's the best item ever, but like I can definitely see play with it. I I I agree. It's my favourite standard out of this list. And I don't think it needs to be the best magic item ever to be worthwhile in the chaos list. Because yeah. as chaos, I look at lots of these things and go, and we'll get onto my my army. Other than favor of the gods, I don't actually think you need any of these. That's not to say any of them. That's not to say there's none that I think are helpful. But I think chaos are so solid in general. Mm. Like, I'm I'm only ever going to give something a seventy percent approval rating, really, because yeah. the other thirty percent of me goes. Do you know what's really good? Another Chaos Knight. Do you know what's better than saving that ca that one one? It's just another Chaos Knight, so it doesn't matter if yeah. you guys. Uh, so the Banner of Rage, thirty five points. You gain Frenzy. However, you can. Oh, and you can't lose this special rule, unlike other Frenzy. Mm. You can't lose it. 
some people go that's a good thing <laughs> but yeah the ability not to lose frenzy is really really like good if you want to keep the frenzy but that in itself can be a trap because <laughs> like people might think great you can't lose frenzy now i'm just gonna f lead you around everywhere <laughs> even when you yeah, lose exactly. the combat exactly i think yeah. this is too much of a liability to put on a yeah. really good unit now you might be able to control it a little bit especially if it's a unit that's in the center of your battle line something mm. do you know weirdly something that's slower yeah. so it won't be led so far out to the flanks if it's in the center of your battle and you can yeah. sort of support it on the sides with faster units that stop that fast cab from baiting you um so i can see slightly a little bit but it's just for me the risk is too big of being baited across the entire board having done it to people and had it done to mm. me as a kid and it being the most yeah. infuriating thing yeah i would not recommend. yeah yeah same sadly do you know what I really like as well as banners? The war banner. <laughs> 25 just... points. Solid. One, co <laughs> one combat risk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, and as chaos, like you don't need anything super fancy. No, you don't. I, just, I think like, it's... Yeah, 25 I points like plus a... one combat risk. I'll take that. I just love a war banner. <laughs> yeah. Easy to please, clearly. Clearly. Now... It's easy to be easy to please when you've also got the gifts of the gods. Right, and we'll, we'll actually do Arcane now because I can see us forgetting to come back to them. Plus, I'm going to pretend like Callum didn't just remind me to do Arcane. <laughs> so, <laughs> the Skull of Katam, 60 points. The Bearer of the Skull of Katam and any wizard within three may apply a plus one modifier to any casting role they make. It's it's not the best, I wouldn't say. It's it's the it's do you know what it is? Go on. There's a lot of weird things about it that just don't add up. Like it's a three inch range, so you yeah. can't exactly sit loads of wizards in different units shooting spells out. They all have to be close yeah. to each other. It's like a cabal of wizards though. That's yeah, what I would. That's what I thought. I like, but in my head, I was like, that'd be that'd be really cool. A big unit of Zinch with three Zinch wizards in there, throwing the Zinch spell out, and you'd be like, Kapla, <laughs> Kapla, <laughs> and just melting their face off. But yeah, I don't know, and it affects enemies as well. So it's like, boo. <laughs> yeah, like it's, I mean, if you are Zinch in a unit strength of ten with this you will get plus two to cast then so your level, well, level two will be right. effectively level four <laughs> or your level four will effectively be level six which is scary scary bananas <laughs> however and and that's quite good right it, but it pales in insignificance yeah next to the infernal puppet do you want to tell us what the infernal puppet does colin <sighs> So, unless the owner of the Infernal Puppet is fleeing or engaged in combat, they may use it whenever an enemy wizard that is within 24 inches makes a casting roll. If they do so, the enemy wizard must roll an extra d6 and disregard the highest. Now. <laughs> that can be game-changing. Yes. I would say this is... Even if you've only got a level 2 wizard... Take this a hundred percent. It will just make you so much more effective. Not only in dispelling, because when you roll against it, it's lower, but yeah. also it increases the chance of miscasts. Yeah. It means that they're less likely to just meet the casting value. And twenty four inch range for this all this additional help dispelling for fifty points. Incredible. It's so good. It's so good. Because you've got to remember as well, if you're a level two, your, your dispel range is shorter yeah. than it would be for level three or four. So this basically can mitigate, if you've only got level two, it mitigate you being, you know, not so good, you know, so good at reaching the range of dispelling anyway. Yeah. So this, this would helps. be just like, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. I've got you sorted with this little puppet. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's just like a slam. 
just a slam, just like, oh, I'm, I'm just a big frog. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Next, and, and we could wax lyrical all day about how good the Infernal Puppet is. Honestly, trust us when we say just take it. There's so many situations where this just obviously gets. But dwarves, but yeah, if but dwarves, but like no, no, most but even cases, dwarves, dwarves now the anvil of doom is a level three power yeah, level, yeah, that's, so it that's will true. cause them to roll three dice. <laughs> that's true. That is true. Yeah, I didn't think about it that way. Or I'm maybe not because like, it's maybe not a wizard; it's a bound spell. But any anyway, yeah. anyway, yeah, it's, yeah, that is you're right actually. Yeah. Yeah, but it's good. It's good. Yeah, take it. Or, like just take it. <laughs> spell familiar, fifteen points. No an extra spell. I prefer than the spell familiar, the law familiar, to no spells of my choice in the common magic I, items list. I think spell familiar is really good in low points games. Yeah, yeah, I can't argue with that. Yeah, I think if you're really worried about how you tool up your wizard and you want something like if you've got level two and you want that you know and you're fishing for spells and you, i know for 15 points to go to a, a law familiar is not much bit much if you are really exhausted for it i do think a spell familiar can come up i think it will come up in lower point games but yeah it's in normal normal games a law familiar i think just wins this yeah, I, I do think it has the benefit, like as you're saying, like low points games, you get more value out of the wizard, you get 50% more value out of a level two. Yeah. So, because you're casting that extra spell every turn. So, mm. there is definitely something to be said for it. It's, I just prefer that. The reliability yeah. of, like, of the, the law familiar. Yeah, being able to pick from rolling is just miles better like because yeah. i can be like right what am i playing against i have that i have that i have that it's just yeah it's very very good law for me even though we're not talking about it but yeah it's very good right let's go on to the gifts of chaos Ooh. and this is one per of each per army and characters have limits So we've got the Dark Majesty for 50 points. Unless the character is fleeing, enemy enemy unit that is required to make a fear or terror check within the character's command range suffers an additional minus one to its leadership characteristic to a minimum of two. It's certainly not my favourite. No, like it's... I suppose with a demon prince, they cause terror, right? So you could take... I think they only cause fear. Do they only... No. I think they only cause fear. No joke. Yeah, they only cause... Yeah, demon princes only cause fear. Sad. Yeah, so after a quick check, just to make sure, I think this would be good if demon princes cause terror so you could fly into a position... Force a terror check at minus one. But I don't see it coming into it that often. Like, Mark of Nurgle doesn't give you fear anymore. It's. If, if it's Shagoth a points. could take it, like, yes. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I suppose, like, you could put this on a Lord on Dragon. But. Yeah. And yes, it's good when a unit runs away from a Lord on Dragon. Hmm. But do you know what's just as good is when your lord smashes into that unit and just kills them. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's instead of like trying to fish for scenarios with that dark majesty, you can just make sure with other things. Yeah. I'd rather make sure than try something else that might pay off, as I know this will pay off. Yeah, uh, demon flesh, forty-five points. The character cannot be wounded. On a roll of two, regardless of the strength of the attack. I love this. Really? Yeah, really? I love this. Yeah, it's a lot of points, but I do actually like it a lot. It's one of my top ones, I'd say, only because I have had so many situations where a cannon, 
or something of high strength fires at me and they roll a two. <laughs> but what re really is, it does, I do think it, I, I do think it will make a really big difference on the demon prince. Mm. If, you're, if you're running that, like, let me, let me go back on what I was saying. I think demon flesh is good on a demon prince. Yeah. Um, or a Chaos Lord and Dragon. Um, I, I think it has a place, definitely. For Wood going back to being, being tough and surviving. Yeah. Um, if someone is hitting you with that big item that they need, what well, weapon to kill you, that, uh, it probably will be something that wounds you on twos because uh, it will be high super high strength because that's what they'll target it with. They're not going to shoot it with uh, bows that often. Uh, but the demon flesh, I do see it coming clutch. I think it's pretty cool. Pretty good. Uh, you see, I tend to just think I'll just be that. I just make sure I'm in a unit and stuff. And there is times when I get nailed with a cannon. But mm. for forty points, the one below it, extra arm and extra attack. Being six yeah. attacks with a chaos lord. Maybe everyone listening has guessed what I tend to use versus what you tend to use. <laughs> Like, as in, like, in terms of Chaos Lord versus Demon Prince. Plus one attack going to six attacks is incredibly good if you've got that spare 40 points. Don't think you need it, because I think your characters are insanely good anyway. Mm. <laughs> because, because, again, Chaos Lord and Chaos characters are really good. Like, I tend to beat most people's characters anyway without, without yeah. any upgrades. Extra Arm is one of the ones that I tend to go for. It does what it says in the tin, doesn't it? Yes, yeah. Ron. It's I've got an extra attack, and that can make a huge difference in the combat race. So I like extra Ron too. Yeah, it's a good one. Now, Demodi Diabolic Splendor for 35 points. Any model that targets this character or any unit they've joined in the shooting phase gets an additional minus one to hit modifier. Take this. I, would I love this one. Mm. I love this one on a BSB in the unit of Chosen. With the Blasted Standard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, if you were shoot, playing against Shooting Army, you rock up that big unit of Chosen with that banner and that that blessing, and they'll be like, oh, that's really not nice. <laughs> Guess there's no point shooting at that unit. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's specific against Shooting Armies or anything that has a lot of shooting in it. But whenever I see it, as a Chaos Warrior, your brain always, like, you know, a Chaos player, like Warriors player, your brain always goes towards, oh, God, they're going to shoot me off the table no matter who you play against. Because yeah. you don't have range, <laughs> and you want to engage, and you, you will often win the fights. So your head goes to, my weakness is shooting, I'll tool up against, well, parts of it, I'll tool up against dealing with that aspect of it. And that Diabolic Splendor just... Wow, I love it. I, I think it's really good for its points value. It's okay. the fact it affects a unit. Yeah. There, yeah that's the biggest that takeaway. Is I love um, things that affect not just my character. Yeah, me but too. The wider army because it's just such a force multiplier. And yeah. to just with chaos, the force multiplier can be oh, just more dudes get there, just more normal yeah. dudes get there because they're super hard anyway. And I'll keep saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Enchanting Aurora. Enchanting Aura, not Aurora. 35 points. Enemies can't use strike first against you. It falls into my thing of, I'm probably tough enough to just survive anyway. Yeah. Like, um, I, I, actually re I actually really like this one, though. Go on. So the, reason what, the reason why I like it, I like it with Marcus and Ash and a great weapon. Right. And the reason why I like that is, I hit you, I'm hitting last because I've got the great weapon. You won't hit me because you've got always strike. You then get always strike last as well. So we're both that. So always strike last drops you to initiative one, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. So we're both at initiative one. But being Marcus and Ash in the first round of combat stacks after that. So you get plus. Two, so you're at initiative two. They're at initiative one. So you're one step ahead of them. So you can just whack through ranks and stuff. And also the way it works is it's base based combat. So if there is a unit coming into contact with your unit. There's some of those models in that front rank, If you even if you get charged, mm. that aren't going to hit before some of yours. You might survive. Your front rank might be able to hit back if you're getting charged just by your hero being at the middle front forefront of that. 
Um, I, I, I really, do. I'm gonna, I haven't actually used it yet, but I really want to try it out. And I, I, I could be completely wrong. Be no, do you know what? It's, I, I think this might be something that comes in with just specific army builds, like in how hmm. I, I am viewing it. So my army being Marauder Horse based with then mm. other units being like Chaos Knights or Dragon Ogres, things with higher movement values, I'm charging a lot more. So yes. then, other than against Elves, I'm usually striking first anyway, and I don't need them to strike last. And I've usually what? got either Lances or Flails rather than Great Weapons. So yeah, it's, so it's very like, skewed towards me striking yeah. first anyway. So that's where we are opposite in our army builds. Like we'll get to that, but like how I like the slow moving advance mm. of and the reg, big regiments of units. That's why that's that's this particular gift sings out to me because I'm like that. Oh, you use, you strike last, even if you charged. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I hit before you for sure. Yeah. So. No, I can see yeah. that. I can see that. Aura of pain, thirty points. Once per game, when this character is chosen during the choose and fight combat sub phase, a single enemy yeah. unit they're in contact with suffers d6 strength three hits with no armor or regen allowed. War saves are allowed. It can be quite course, good depending on whether yeah. they're toughness three or not. That's exactly it. If you're fighting elves, I think that give it a whirl, see what it does. Elves, Brett, um, Empire. Yeah. Yeah, but against yeah, dwarves, yeah. orcs, chaos dwarves, and anything with toughness four or more, it's it might it you might just roll the the dice. It's probably on average going to get you one kill of a cavalry model at strength at, that's toughness four, so probably worth the points. But whether or not I want to take up my gifts limit with that versus plus one attack every round of the game. Yeah. At my strength of seven. Or Diabolic Splendor that benefits my entire unit all the time. I'm not sure. Yeah, for me, it's a no. Just, I, I'd like to say, I'd love to know if someone tries it against, like like you said, Bretonians or Elves. That'd be really funny to hear stories of it paying off. <laughs> it's D6, so I get six, and I wound you on yeah. fours. There's, and you yeah. only get a six up ward. Yeah. Anything that hurts Elves. Do it. <laughs> yeah, I fully agree. Master of Mortals, 25 points. Unless the character is fleeing, friendly units of Marauder and Marauder Horse gain plus one modifier to leadership within this character's command range to 10. Now, I think you might like this one. I do like this one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, I do like this one. It's plus one leadership and that coming in against like the fear it, fear break anything just having plus one leadership making you more reliable for 25 points mm. and it's notice i keep coming back to like the reliability of my army and it's something like with the like the largely cavalry focus that i tend to have like i've got infantry units that i do use sometimes but with the fast cavy army it needs to be very mm. reliable and this allows me to be that I imagine you yeah. like this less because you ignore panic. I, I yeah, exactly. With my Snesh army, I am less like. But in the future, I do want to do a Norska with like you know with whatever comes out from that uh, Marauder army. Mm. I think this would be awesome. This would be so cool. This one, and it just sounds cool as well. Like for the points value and what it does, you look at it. It's a nice package for the twenty-five points. Yeah. Uh, well, because it's, it's it's a buff that's always there as long as that character's alive, yeah, which it, I love things like that. It means that if your character's just rocking about nearby, your marauders that have warband are going to be going up to, and I, I don't. That's amazing. Yeah. So, with the marauders having warband but not hard, and the leadership of the unit champion being seven, they'll go up to a total of leadership ten by using Master of Mortals, which is then higher than your Chaos Lord could take them anyway. It's insane. Yeah. yeah it makes that's, some... that's so good. Yeah, really good. Really 25 good. points, send it. If you've got a Marauder Army, do it. Go for it. Yeah, and maybe, I don't know, you could take 50 
a unit of 50 marauders like I've been taking my men at arms for Bretonians and just never run away. Just give him corn. Because <laughs> it'd be funny. <laughs> well, well, and you'd never be baited out because you, if you've got a unit of 50 that's 10 wide, it's so hard to, to wheel that unit anyway. You can never make a successful charge in the first place. So then, yeah. <laughs> so then who cares? Exactly. Acid as well. 15 points. For every wound your character loses during a challenge, the enemy suffers a strength 4 AP minus 2 hit. Um... I, do, I want to kill that enemy character before they do many wounds to me anyway, so I always swerve this. Yeah, I, I can see it having a place. Like, I don't think it's bad. I think it's if you've got points left over in your army building list and you have got and you have gifts mm. available, I think take it on a character if you've got put points there. Um, if you've got 15 points to fit in somewhere, and I think it's not a bad one, really. If you've got quite a high wounds character, Minus two AP is nothing to laugh about, and strength four is pretty good. Um, yeah, I, but yeah, I, it's, it's not, I don't. Like, I'm not. I'm not. not bad, but I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not seeing. I'm not shouting off the roofs about it. Yeah. What the one thing that this is say like, <laughs> it's not like directly competing since it's two completely different things. Acid Acre gets me half a point of war, a half a unit of warhounds, mm. and tactically being able to just throw some warhounds in the way. Is so good versus yeah. Acidica only being useful during challenges. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm not paying attention. I completely forgot about the challenge part. Yeah. Scratch what I said. <laughs> yeah. Ignore that, what I said. Yeah. Because it's against, your lord, the against enemy lords when they hire toughness anyway. Most yeah. of the time. And the if it wasn't challenges, lords. I think, yeah, if it wasn't challenges, if that would was moved, I feel like, oh, that's really cool. But why did I just completely phase out and not read the charge of it? But yeah, it happens. Um, it happens. I'd scratch that. Yeah, Poison I, I, I would. How about that one then? I think I've normally got a strength of seven, so I don't yeah. really need to to auto wound on sixes for fifteen points. Yeah. Yeah, because it doesn't affect the mount either. So. Yeah, that like, needs. At the end of this list, they've sort of been like sort of four or five that we've liked between us out of them. Mm. Again, and I suppose with the magic items towards the tail end, there was a bunch that we liked. But as we get onto the units, it's one of them that I don't think you miss. Like, mm. these not like, other than the Infernal Puppet, they're like drop jaw magic item. Yeah. But I don't think you miss it with your stat lines. So they've just got such good universal special rules that yeah, but even it's... even the ensorcelled weapons being minus one AP. I know that's yeah. on a few armies, but it's just so good. Chaos armor is just so good, and they're just army wide. Um, shall we get onto the units? Let's do it. I'm gonna start again. Right, so onto the units we've got. The champions of chaos, so it's chaos lord, exalted champion, and aspiring champion. What to say about these? Let's let's go chaos. Let's talk about chaos lord versus the demon prince. That's how let's do it, and then we can talk about the exalted <laughs> champion, and aspiring. Yeah. So chaos lord, weapon skill seven, you strength toughness five, four wounds, initiative six, five attacks, leadership nine, one hundred and ninety five points, or so pretty expensive. But you've got mm. full plate, a hand weapon which is minus one AP at your strength of five. So that's wounding like on basic humans on twos anyway. Yeah. Chaos armor five up. Gaze of the gods, so you're getting better 50% of the turns. And let's just call these cost 200 points because you're taking favor of the gods, I would say. Yeah. Rallying cry, so anyone that's running away re rolls that within the command range. An undivided that can be changed to another mark for like 10 points I yeah. think he's really solid really really solid Chaos Lords are the Chaos Lords of fantasy but it's hard to fault Chaos Lord um, when you look at it on paper and when you play it in a game it's just a very good unit <laughs> yeah um, stick it in anything and it will kill stuff right how how do you tend to run a chaos lord when you do 
Well, if I was going to run a curse lord, oh. I would I would run it on a dragon. If you were <laughs> being optimal. If you were to be optimal, you'd you'd put you'd put it on a dragon and you'd run it into units and it would kill every unit it runs into. <laughs> it it is good now. Yeah. When you I'm just being salty about dragons. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dragon Hammer is the new yeah. thing of the internet, and as in, like, I'm not saying they're not good. They are incredibly good. I wait for the day where someone just has a a war banner and then challenges with an unkillable dwarf lord or something, exactly. and has a unit <laughs> behind my dragon, and I just run off the table because I've not rallied yet from falling back in the water. <laughs> <order. laughs> Serves you right as well. Yeah, well, exactly, <laughs> exactly, because it's it is a very good combo on dragon. I actually like the manticore as well. Right, let's. Do you know what? Let's go through them. So you your steeds, you've got the option of a chaos steed, which is obviously strength four, attacks one, your movement seven, so you keep up with a chaos knights, but you slow down marauder horsemen. You've got first charge, which is good for denying ranks, obviously, and swift ride, obviously. It's okay. It's okay for 16 mm. points. Demonic mounts, I really like. You've got movement 8, strength 5, plus 1 wound, so you're now 5 wounds. I suppose that helps with acid blood. 2 yeah. attacks and a stomp attack, so you've effectively 3 attacks at strength 5, one of which auto hits. Fear, uh, swift stride, armor bane 1. It's really, really good. I would say any time you're going to take a Chaos Steed, find the points to take a Demonic Mount. Actually gets the mark of the character that's dropped on top of it as well, which is really cool. So, yeah, so it, has, have... it has corn, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a corn. Um, Zinch for flaming attacks. We, we, we t- touched on that not being a good thing always, but uh, you know, it, it's pretty cool that it does get the mark of the character. And it will get that plus one initiative for Slanesh. Yeah, yeah exactly. Awesome. Yeah, and it, on a, this this is actually the main way that I run my Chaos Lord is on Demonic Mount because it, it, I can't it. fault it. It's for its points. It's really really good. Yeah, agreed. Now Manticore, as you were saying, is plus four wounds, so it's eight total wounds, four attacks, at weapon skill, and strength five. Most of them are with Wicked Claws. That's three mm. out of the four. That's AP minus two. And one of them has to be with the Venomous Tail that's Poison Attacks and Strike First. Which I'd actually prefer it to be with the Wicked Claws. Like, it's actually a bit of a debuff. Um, Willful Beast is that during the start of the turn, sub-phase, the model must take a leadership check. If passed, it's okay. If failed, you've lost control and the model becomes subject to Frenzy. So situationally, it's better to become frenzied, like when you're in combat. Yeah. Like the D three stomp attacks is fairly solid at strength five. Swift t- has terror, so the I... fifty point emanation. Ian, who did your dwarf review? Yes, uh, was talking to you about the Manticore, and he thinks. Um, don't quote me on this word for word, but we were discussing about the Manticore and the Dragon, and he said it basically does what the Dragon does for a lot less points. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's something that I also was thinking, like, in vampire counts, when you've got your Terror Geist, and, or you... It's not a Terror Geist. The, the Abyssal Terror. Yeah. It's, it's four, plus four rather than, what is it, plus six wounds on the Chaos Dragon. But... Chaos Lord is yeah. already pretty nails. And it's it provides you with that mobility. I I really like it as an option. I I agree with Ian. It's it's just a, it's just cool as well. And once Ian told me that, it sort of changed my mind. And I was like, I always want to be on a manticore now instead of a dragon. One, because manticores are cooler than dragons, and two. No one else is doing it. <laughs> Not because of that, but you know, it's just it's one of those things. It's just it's nice to see different things in in the game itself. So running that and it does essentially do what a dragon does. So yeah, yeah. So I think I'm going to run my Chinese style 
dragon as a manticore for the option and then have my big dragon as a dragon dragon to give me the option of both because I do think it's a the manticore is a good competitive choice. Mm. And especially when you start applying like the regens to it because the model's profile is combined as long as yeah. the five up in Vaughn, it's just incredibly good. Dragons. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we are in the era of Dragon Hammer. <laughs> yeah. Dragons are weapon skill 6, strength 7, plus 1 toughness to your lord, so you'll be toughness 6, plus 6 wounds, so you'll be 10 mm. wounds. It's got 6 attacks. <laughs> right. You've got Wicked Claws, which are the minus 2 AP, so you win most things on 2s and have an AP great weapon, the same as Wicked Claws on the Manticore. You've got two types of breath weapon, one which is minus one AP strength four, and one which is strength two. Uh, and oh, and no armor saves, which is surprisingly good against, like, say, a Bretonian Night Lance. Yeah, that you might have gone into. Yeah, it's. I think it's a. Oh, stomp attacks D six. I mean, he's got all the of... dragony stuff, right? Is it? What do you think? Is a dragon good? Yes, it is. <laughs> like it's, but everyone knows that. My nan knows that. Dragon <laughs> dragons are really good. Um, it's not my. Yeah, I can't. I can't fault it. The only thing I say is like, yeah, it's, there's a there's a danger of being on this big thing for tar- being targeted. But you can say it for most other things as well. Yeah, well, if you um, then combine this with the Crimson Armor of Dargon, where you can only take one wound... You, can, you can't you can be mounted on a dragon with that, I don't fuck. think. Fuck! Well, cut that bit out. No, it's fine. It's fine, you need to say it. Cause I need, I, otherwise, it'll be in there for the rest of time. Um, so, yeah, it's, as you say, it's, that could be said for any dragon, and they're doing quite well at the moment. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, think that'll last. Can... I think we'll all find ways to beat these single characters. That's the thing. So if you're that, if it buffs your toughness, makes you super ta- like super like health. You've got so many wounds. Your tough. What you, what toughness are you now? Six. Yeah, your toughness six. With so, ten right. wounds. So most things, you're not going to get many wounds through shooting it, right, or no. hitting it. And when you do. Having a really good armor save, I'd rather have fit. So the things that are high strength tend to have like a high armor, like AP value. Yeah. I think, again, going back to builds for it, um, meteorotic iron armor yeah. on the Chaos Lord of this would be really good with the Crown of Everlasting Conquest um, and the inbuilt ward save on a dragon. Just feel f- just that alone. That is it's just like it's hard to remove. It's just it's a t- tough, tough cookie. Yeah, I I agree. Now, shall we? Basically, actually, I'll give my Chaos Lord loadout mostly. It's he's on a demonic mount, and he's got either a flail or a lance with a shield. And 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 that. Oh, and favour of the gods. So he rocks in at about 240-something points. And he's mm. cheap as chips, really, but manages to bash yeah. most other people's lords. Obviously, he'll come across another person's Chaos Lord at some point and be like, oh, guess I lose now. But yeah. actually, <laughs> the the profile is so good, a Dwarf Lord with 100 points of runes tends to lose to my Chaos Lord. Mm. So he doesn't need loads to buff it, and it's the way that I would recommend going Chaos Lord because it then lets you get more points into other things. Yeah. Now, d- directly comparison to that, Callum, Demon Prince. Why should I take a Demon Prince? Uh, well, I thematically like Demon Princes. I think the idea of them are really, really, really cool. Um, I think one of the big caveats is that they are a small based high casting wizard that can fly around relatively small base not map like you know but not like a dragon or anything like that yeah and it 
it's pr like in combat there's, there's things that can yeah within its rule set cause it to collapse on itself but it's actually quite tanky and it, it's got one of the best ward saves in the game <laughs> yeah yeah chaos armor four plus with regen five plus and i know yeah you've got light armor as well but uh, and it can be upgraded to heavy mm. magic items up to 100 points so crim like not the crimson armor of dargon i suppose you can take the crimson armor of dargon take one wound instead of multiple from cannons but the armor of meteoric iron combined with chaos armor four regen five as standard that's really good yeah that's really good i it's, think so too the regen five essentially combines the crown of everlasting conquest into the chaos yeah. lord and yeah you can't go on a mount for more wounds but fly nine i think you give this guy marker zinch um i think you, you i think you fly him around you charge uh like artillery units uh and you just cast spells at small units that like to pepper units and do little things or or, or flank um chaff units all this sort of stuff mm. and he just goes around and it's a lot of, don't get me wrong i know it's, i know people are gonna be out there being like oh that's so many points for that but it's like he's not just doing that um he's also he can also debuff units he can buff himself um again bringing out the damage to other units i think in terms of what he can provide, is like a Swiss army knife yeah. of a character. Um, yeah, like I clearly know that looking at it on paper, a Chaos Lord and Dragon would be better than him. I know that. But in terms of how the game actually, you know, one on one fight, and we're like, oh, combat this, combat that. If I were playing a Demon Prince, I wouldn't even charge you. I would fly around. <laughs> I would, you wouldn't even get near me, Sunshine. Uh, it would be flying around, sapping units, it would be charging cavalry units, and if your dragon tries to chase my demon prince around, good luck, yeah. let's have fun. Well, it's, I, I definitely think the demon prince has utility. At, like, at being a level four wizard in a very fighty slot means you're losing nothing. You can mm. join units because you're monstrous infantry, and, and yeah. big things can join, join little things, it's just little things can't join units of big things. Yes. So you can stick them in a unit of like chosen warriors if you go on the side of them or fits nicely on that like 50 by 50 in a mm. unit of marauders so can be doing stuff like that yeah and he's as you said tanky and you're not worried about unstable if you're in a unit of marauders and yeah. you can just be I, I suppose you can with this have mark of zinch in a unit of marauders with mark of zinch with the skull of Katam, and you then get plus six to casting, and that that's really good. Way. Yeah. yeah, and you also yeah. this nails combat lord. He's got he gets a hundred point, points of items. I think now I, I, I'm I, this is what I'm going to be bit heads up to your event running it. I want to put a potion of vitality on him mm -mm. and run him doing stuff, and if he does drop me heals back up so it's i feel like the idea of keeping him like just keep making him survive is enough to make him be an absolute terror um plus i just want to see how it plays if I, it could be rubbish but um i i really on paper i really like them i think they're fun uh and i think they're kind of unique as well in, in terms of what armies provide yeah it's I, not like I know a lot crocs of characters or stuff it's more like a but I suppose it is like nothing else, as you say. It's unique. It's it's a wizard that can fly. That's a monster. These chaos lord stats. Yeah, on like a slightly much bigger monstrous infantry infantry base. It's yeah. and it's yeah, it's it's very tanky as well. Where it wants to be. <laughs> yeah. So on to the exalted champion, inspiring champion. These are quite quick. The Exalted Champion at three wounds and four attacks at strength five, weapon skill six, is very good for 125 points. Although it's quite low leadership at eight, mm. it is as good as most Lord levels in other armies. 
is how I tend to think of it. Yeah, I would exactly think of it that way. Um, and I think it makes a brilliant BSB. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, cause it's a strong BSB. So people, will, a lot of armies BSBs, they're not essentially the strongest or toughest thing to deal with, but they're there. I think even if you have an exalted champion with BSB, he can still murder quite a few high tier heroes. Yeah. No, I, I agree. And even if you just have that BSB, I'd recommend it in every army because it helps with the break test. But also, 25 points for plus one combat res that you can then add another 25 points for a war banner. So plus two static combat res. And then also being an exalted champion here, so really killy, is really, really good. I tend to just run the one, even if I'm at the 2,000 points mark. And I mm. tend to run the rest as aspiring champions because I find aspiring champions really good as well. Like with a lance or a flail. And yeah, three they're cheap. They're, yeah, they're so cheap as well. Points. Like I tend to be rocking about with three of them in my Marauder Cav army and they're just leading units in Marauder Cav and really, That's really making cool. up for the like lack of combat. Or they end up lacking, com like making up the lack of combat power of the Marauder Hot Cav unit. That's such a really cool idea. I love that idea. That's really cool. Yeah, the idea of just filling up these Marauder units with flails and horses and just going in and chopping units up on the flanks and stuff. That's awesome. Well, that, yeah. But not just the flanks, the, the centre of the army. My, my army has. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. God, God, Callum. Like, you, you, oh, you, must yeah, play you, me. Like... you must play me and we will find out. Horseman army, you go in the flanks and stuff. I don't just play everywhere. Your armies everywhere. <laughs> right. So, yeah, he's finishing off the characters bit here for the Champions of Chaos. Not a load needs to be said. We've gone over it in the Chaos Lord, and the same applies with the loadouts. Um, yeah. Hopefully, we've given enough for the magic items. But let's go on to the Sorcerers of Chaos. Now, in the book, I love the artworks attached to this because <laughs> it's the surprise on these Bretonian peasants that this wizard can also fight in combat. They're like, fuck! <laughs> yeah, and he's just like vapor. He's just lightning. Oh, not lightning, but vaporizing beam. Like, yeah, he just down looks like to skeleton. skeleton. Down yeah, to skeleton. Yeah, he looks like, ske he looks like Skeletor as well. It's like, <laughs> just zapping them. Yeah, so. For 195 points for the Sorcerer Lord, you get a not the best, but actually a pretty good combat character, along with being yeah. a level 3 4. Exalted Sorcerers for 90 points, like level 1 2, obviously. Still a decent combat character. <laughs> uh, strength, toughness 4, weapon skill 4, and 2 attacks. And it's worth saying, like, with Chaos Armor 5 up, heavy armor or light armor on the Lord and the Exalted Sorcerer. They're pretty tanky and can yeah. roll Gaze of the Gods. So 50% of the time, they're getting better in combat every turn. Yeah. Like it's, it's, I, I think they're really good. I like them. I really like them. So um, the mark spells, depending on what mark you take, is also really dependent on builds as well. Shall we go to the... Uh, just as a very quick thing, I very much like Demonology. For my sorcerer's chaos, of course, it's yeah, the yeah. one that I pretty much always roll on. Whenever I've used battle magic or dark magic, I've not found them it to be as good a law for myself as just rolling on demonology. I think demonology is the standout one. I'm not keen on battle magic. I think there's a place for dark magic, maybe, but uh, demonology stands out the most to me. It's, it's. I think it's it sort of compounds for me a little bit. Demonology. They're all fairly solid. So even before I was like, I'll just use a law familiar. I just was using demonology. Mm. And it's like, oh, the, the the signature spell, solid for the summoning. 2d6 strength form, AP minus two. Well, that's pretty good. Makes up my lack of shooting a bit. And it AP minus two, really good. Making you plus one movement. I think it's movement and strength and initiative. As a as an enchantment spell, really good. Strength, toughness, attacks. I think it is really good. And there's just a bunch. Of, I think there's like one spell that I don't like in that spell list. Versus yeah, demonology, like a third yeah. of them I don't like. 
or I said not a third, a half of them. I don't like. I only really like Fireball and Hammerham. Yeah, is okay. I Dem- guess. Dem- Demonic Vigor. Yeah, it's just so good. Target friendly against plus one modifier to movement, toughness, and initiative. It's just yeah. huge. Yeah. Especially for warriors that have. If, if you cast that, you have chosen. That is bad news, bears. <laughs> the opponent, they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's high casting value. That's what I've noticed about demonology. It's quite high casting values, but you're going to be using this on like a level three or four anyway. So yeah, or Mark of Zinch in a unit of Zinch with the Skull of Katam. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm, I'm level six, baby. <laughs> so I go to the spells of the laws page. So here we come to the Lore of Chaos page. I have got the most experience in Blue Fire and Winds of Chaos. Like, or not the most, I'm not saying the most out of either of us. I'm saying, like, I've not really used Nurgle and Slanesh. So I have to leave it to Callum. But Winds of Chaos is a hex, seven or nine, range 21. If it's seven or more, the enemy gets minus one to movement. If it's nine or more, minus two movement. I prefer the summoning's base level spell. It can be really clutch getting like minus two to someone's movement. Can make someone be out of charge range. And you also know it before you move your own unit, which is good because I don't like spells that are like, I move my unit and then make the enemy unable to charge. I've already got that knowledge going into what I'm going to do in my turn. It's kind of it's kind of a weird one because that spell would be really good on a shooting army. Yeah, yeah, it'd be excellent. It'd be excellent. It does let you control like obviously like board presence a bit more. Yeah. But yeah. do you know what's much better? Just killing a unit. <laughs> <laughs> like I tend to find yeah. a unit that moves slower is better than a unit that's not there. Yeah. In I don't that it's just the, the crazy logic that my head tends to do. Blue fire helps a bit more with that because it's a, a nine plus to cast range eighteen, so the same as most, or the same as the summoning in demonology. The mm. enemy unit suffers d six plus three, so basically an average roll on two d six, strength four, AP minus two with flaming hits. See the flaming bit, obviously, because it's injured, will have that, but so that can be a bit of a hindrance as well. But it can also be pretty amazing against regen units or flammable units yeah yeah it's, it's a trade as we said in the the mark section mm. it's it, i think it's it a very good spell takes, and i think with being a spell the things that tend to have resistance to flaming mm. other than like chaos dwarf armies the things that tend to have resistance to flaming tend to be a single character that's not going to get hit by a shooting attack. It's more yeah, of a exactly. problem when I've, I'm in close combat and I'm like, oh, my lord has to take on your lord. Yeah. What I love about this spell is the plus three. Because, mm. you know, you quite, you'll quite often see those chaff units with five five cap, fast cavalry or something like that just to block chargings or warhounds or whatever people are using. The fact that it's plus three is that the minimum, you know, minimum you're going to get is four, that which is enough to enough for one of those units to panic if you do manage to wound them all. There, obviously, there's nuances to that, but I just love that it comes like built in like that with strength four minus two. Um, I think it's a really good spell. Yeah, I find myself picking this over the summoning when I've run Zinch Army. Mm. Uh, just for that extra again reliability so that i can engineer what i want to engineer before i get to combat and it just chips away at the units i need to chip away at nail on the head there that's exactly what i was trying to get at it's the engineering and reliability of that spell it's just so good will you take us through acquiescence and fleshy abundance fleshy abundance so acquiescence is a hex. Yeah. Uh, it's casting value is six slash. Uh, range twelve, and its effect is until the end of the combat phase, the target enemy unit becomes subject to the strike for last special rule. Now, because it's a hex, 
you do this before declaring charges. And at casting value six, that's pretty, pretty good. Yes. So going back to me saying a unit of great weapons. Yeah. I've chosen or whatever. It can be anything. And you have Marcus Slanesh on the unit. Mm. And then you charge said unit that you've cast a spell on. Your great weapon unit is hitting before they even get a chance to. In most cases, in most cases, there are there are nuances to that yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. But um, but most cases, you cast this, you charge, and you hit with high damage attacks, and they don't get to hit back. <laughs> yeah. If you set it up correctly, from that game I was playing yesterday, mm. funnily enough, um, and it worked really well. I really really enjoyed it. Yeah, and I suppose it's another instance in the army where, say, like, it's di- is it Diabolic Slander that makes you your enemy strike last from the gifts? Or whichever yes. that one is. It's yeah, another yeah, instance sorry, yeah. in that where you've, you're you convincing me as you keep telling me this, because uh, it's not something I was massively into before. But just having this in multiple places, because you can only have that gift in one place, yeah, will really help you get those situations off that Callum is saying about. I think just having low level wizards running this around in horse units, like if you had a maraud unit of Marcus and Ash with flails or what great weapons and you just cast this at you just throw the spell out everywhere and just cast it and just start charging into stuff. Going first at, now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just being an absolute nightmare. Be like, <laughs> It'd be for some armies it, it won't matter like Dwarves and things like that because they will tend to they just strike last. But elves, yeah, and you know, uh, we can make a big difference if a, a likely outside of your chaos warriors and stuff. It tends to be quite lightly armored. The chaos armor, yeah. like your characters are obviously nails. Your chaos warriors are nailed because they've earned the favor of the gods and got their their armor. Mm. Marauders and stuff, pretty lightly armored. And this yeah. will make up for that sort of thing. Yeah, it's the it's the what it, what my caveat is for this is great weapon with mm. this spell is just because the downside of the great weapon is yeah I've got this amazing attack that breaks mm. through armor, but am I going to get to use it? Yeah, but I suppose even the normal chaos warriors or yeah, the chosen yeah. chaos warriors that don't have access to flails like marauders do. No really help yeah I, I like this spell a lot i rate it um it, it's easy to cast range is okay range 12 is okay and it being a hex um yeah that obviously only lasts for until the end of the combat phase but yeah but if you your enemy's already been defeated by then and you've seen them driven before you you don't need it to last any longer exactly just the hear the whales fleshy abundance <laughs> I I like this one as well. Uh, do you know what skimming it? I think I'm going to. So it's an enchantment casting value yeah. seven on range self remains in play when this spell is in play. The caster and any unit they've joined gain plus one toughness, and because it remains in play, it so we've just been through the ogre's guide last week. Yeah. Uh, for Callum's benefit. And a Toothcracker gives you plus one toughness in your own turn where I'm well I'm gonna only make charges but I'm gonna comfortably win anyway is usually my method. Yeah. So Toothcracker doesn't help me because it only helps me in my turn, so I'm not gonna be in combat like unless I'm winning. Fleshy abundance helping me in my opponent's turn so I can set up a turn ahead with plus one toughness, I think is incredible. It's the fact, like, I, remains in play, they're like a, they're quite a sleeper thing. Like, they're annoying because you have to get rid of them in your phase as well. Mm. Uh, the enemy has to get, if they don't dispel it, they have to get, they're like, oh, I've got to deal with this part of it now as well. Um, and just plus one, just having plus one toughness and just sitting there is, is quite threatening. Because they're going to weather the storm, especially on a Chaos Warrior, who's toughness four anyway. That's a toughness five unit of murderers. Yeah, and if you've got Mark of Nurgle, 
you're making them re-roll any sixes to hit you, and you're now toughness five, is incredibly sickening for your opponent. It's like, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do I do? I, this is what I get the impression I get from Chaos Warriors with their spells and all the things they do. They just, what they're good at, everything helps them get better at it. That's what I like quite a lot, like a lot of their builds and what we've been talking about. It's just making them maintain that thing they're really, really good at and what they're solid at. Obviously, you can say it about most armies, but how they function as an army. Yeah, I, I think it's because they've quite, they've done quite well. Like the what the different gods of chaos want to be doing. Each rule that they've included that does anything along those lines does it quite well and meshes well within to the wider whole. So then yeah. you have this army that say like, oh, I want a really survivable unit. We'll just take the Nurgle things. And yeah. by taking all of the Nurgle things, it really helps you. If you want to kill things before you get hit, take the Slanesh things and it just works. If you want to be good at magic and killing, help that helping you kill from afar, Zinch, very good at it. And then <laughs> Khan... I, ah. yeah, yeah. I think that's the best way to describe it. An undivided is you're more you just more reliable all round. I think if you're going undivided, you tend to have a bigger army. That's the look at it I always have because you're spending less points on marks and stuff like that, and you, you're more dishing out on model distribution and think, mm -hmm. as opposed to having these elite armies. So like you're going to see low. I think I hope to see loads of armies and marauders with just no marks running around with less, like psychopaths huge units of them because what how, yeah. how many points is a, how many points is for a mark for what for a marauder unit one point a model top of my head but if you just had undivided i mean they're six if points you a model. Get, to be fair yeah so you could have 50 of them for 300 points pretty good yeah and they're going to be leadership nine or ten if you've got master of mortals and they get they start getting expensive but like 50 is a bit too much maybe like unlike bretonian peasants that you can run at that size but big units of marauders i think would be really successful and cool uh but and that's that's, that's one for next yeah. time callum i think yeah i know we'll get back to that yeah so me and callum now been recording for actually two and a half three hours and it's getting late in this part of the world so we're going to leave it here and we will be back next week for the second part where we'll go over the units and do comparisons of why the hell would i take chaos warriors over chosen chaos warriors or why would i take chaos knights versus dragon ogres um and we thought we'd do a little bit of a like a long form in the specifics within the army. Uh, I think that just goes to show what chaos is really about, isn't it? It's just they've got so much options because they're due to the chaotic nature that they are. You can ramble on forever about them. <laughs> they're just such a unique, cool army. Yeah, agreed. Um, so hopefully everyone enjoyed it and hopefully you're looking forward to next week and we'll catch you next time. In a bit.